The oceans are our hope. All life on Earth is dependent upon our oceans. Most of our oxygen comes from the oceans. There are more cures that will come from the ocean than will ever come from land. Some of the microorganisms in corals might make an enzyme that drives new molecular biology. Every time we go down there, we're seeing animals which have never been seen before. The oceans provide food, energy, safe navigation. So we need an ocean that's healthy, valued, and understood. But we probably only know five to 10% of what the deep ocean is like. It needs to be mapped much more accurately. More accurate maps will help humankind. The challenge of working in the deep ocean is extraordinary. The pressure requires all kinds of special housings. You have salt water, which is very corrosive. You have intense temperatures, and it's incredibly dark. You can't communicate with it. It relies on big ships, and it costs a lot of money per day doing it. But if we can remove those expensives from the equation, that will make this step change in terms of our ability to map the oceans and do some useful work on the seabed as well. The Shell Ocean Discovery X Prize is a $7 million international competition where teams have been challenged to map the sea floor in autonomous or unmanned operational mode. Using the technology we have today to map can take days and we're asking them to do it in a matter of hours. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Bonus Prize, or the NOAA Bonus Prize, is a $1 million competition in which teams have to detect a chemical or biological signal and then track it to the source of that signal. We had 32 teams with members from well over 25 countries. Japan, Norway, Germany, Ghana, from junior high school students up to people that have been in the industry for 30 plus years. I closed my finance firm and went into engineering. It's not just for the experts, it's for everyone and anyone to take part. Originally, our round one testing was going to be in one location. We had secured Puerto Rico, but then Hurricane Irma hit. This thing continues to break records right now, 55 miles east northeast of San Juan. It didn't seem like it was total disaster, and then to get hit by a second one. Hurricane Maria slamming into the island, and one official saying the island is destroyed. I think we all knew at that point things were going to have to change. But everyone was still pulling together and marching forward. So we decided we would rework round one and we traveled around the world to test each team. Our concept was to use an unmanned surface vessel operating in conjunction with an autonomous underwater vehicle. We moved all the power and movement part of it into the air out of the ocean, and then the drone does all the moving. Unlike a traditional AEV which swims horizontally, we've programmed our AEV to swim vertically. We decided to use local materials. We came up with a battery pack from laptop batteries. Our team is building a fleet of underwater gliders. Our AV is really compact. One person can carry our AV and we can put it in the back. I don't know everything about all the other teams, but I think they all face significant challenges. Okay, so we're here testing round one for Team Argonauts in Germany. It's been extremely cold. We were not prepared to test it under minus degrees, so some of the components are not feeling so happy. We're out here with the team, and there ended up being a short, and they blew one of their power boards. Building that heavy lift drone has been a challenge, although we got to enjoy seeing it crash the other day. It doesn't matter if it's a bolt or if it's a sonar, everything at some point has failed. And after all of that, round one, crazy, we did the last round of testing, the final round in Greece. Our goal was to win in the semi-finals, but once you're in the stadium, you of course want to win. It was all sitting on the edge of the seat type moment for all this testing. The Argonauts went out and this morning they can't find the surface vessel or the deep vessel. People were of course stressed under such an emotional and psychological pressure. I feel exhausted and excited. Adrenaline is pumping, so I can't really sleep. Each day seems like 20 days. <laughs> this is probably the hardest that a lot of the guys in the team have ever worked. We're tired, we're knackered, and at times that's painful and it hurts, but I think in the long run it's going to pay dividends. This is the last minutes of the last competition. How are you feeling? Well, now we can sleep. <laughs> now we can sleep. <laughs> Okay, we just witnessed a moment in history. This has never been done before. It's gonna change the world. It's been great seeing so many teams be successful because now people see that this can be done. With the XPRIZE, when you ask people to do something that 99% of the world says it's impossible, 1% comes back and they meet what you're doing.
It's one of the beauties of the X Prize is that it's not there to say, this is the end. It's there to say, this is the start. Right now, current technology has us mapping the ocean floor in a couple hundred years. And we are going to develop a method to do it in 10. It's going to be earth shattering. The long term outcome from this project is a better understanding of our world. What lies under our oceans, Grand Canyons and Mount Everest that we don't even know about. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not worth looking after. We will only protect what we love and we can only love what we know. It is an entirely new planet to be exploring.